Oh, yes. Always is. Oh, yes. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Welcome to the September 28, 2015 Selectman's Meeting. First on the agenda, we have RSA 41-14-A, final hearing and vote for the acquisition of land at Harris, Harris and Fellows Ave. Yes, like this, to uh, st this has start? to do with a parcel of land that triangular in shape, uh, which uh, borders both Harris Avenue and Fellows Avenue. It is an area, it's laid, labeled on a plan approved by the planning board back in 2007, area to be deeded to the town of Hampton. It's 812 square feet. Uh, your proceeding uh, is the statutory uh, provision uh, by which the selectmen may acquire or sell land. This is not the same as laying a road out over it. That's a totally separate proceeding which would be pursued or not at a later date. So we're only uh, considering whether or not to uh, carry out the condition of the planning board approval. Uh, we have a deed to the, um, to the area which is yet to be recorded, and this is simply the vote to carry out the <coughs> recommendation of the planning board. This has been vetted through the planning board as well as the Conservation Commission, and you've held your two requisite public hearings, and this is now the meeting at which there would be action. So it would simply require, if you choose, a motion to um, approve the, um, to acquire the uh, parcel. Okay, questions? So Mr. Bridal? It's a public hearing first, so is there any audience? Oh, that yeah, that's right. Anyone from the audience like to uh, comment? Seeing none, we'll move to the board. We'll start with Mr. Waddell. Uh, I'm set on this. Mr. Bryan? I'm all set, thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. So, just so I can clarify, this does not address layout. This addresses only the town acquiring that particular triangle? Correct. Of land? Correct. And is the width of that relevant? Uh, the width spans the existing width, whatever it may be. Well, 30, it's 30 feet one way and 40 feet the other way, so I just... Fellows and Harris. Right, because the town's road width minimum standard has been 50 feet, so I'm just kind of, is there leeway anywhere in there? What about the adjacent properties to make the road wider, to meet standards? Uh, well, I would say that would be something to address at a later time. That's fine, except that I get nervous about doing something that gets us in trouble later on. Thank you. Mr. Bean. Mr. Chairman, I have no questions. Does someone want to make a motion? I will uh, I'll make the motion to accept the piece of property. Yes. To accept the piece of property so mentioned. I'll second. All those in favor? I'm opposed. Four to one. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to public comment. Is anyone out there like to comment from the public? Seeing none, we'll move on to announcements and community calendar. Mr. Waddell. Yes, I have a couple of things I'd just like to talk about in announcements. Number one, I went to that uh, presentation that the school put on about the Hampton Academy and about the needs of Hampton Academy, and I want to say that the school did a, a phenomenal job oh, yeah. doing a very good presentation, and uh, it's really incumbent about everybody with school-aged children and not with school-aged children to get involved. They're putting it on their website, so you can see everything that's going on on the website, and they're going to have more meetings concerning it. So everybody should really pay attention and should get there. And I want to commend the, both the uh, physical department and the education department at Hampton Academy for doing a super job with a school that really needs to be upgraded. I mean, they still keep a very safe environment and a very positive environment. So that's one thing. The other thing is uh, on the rooms and meals tax, uh, meetings I went again last week the committee has really listened to everybody and the committee is really trying to come up with a solution to the problem so they're, they're making a great effort to work on it 
and uh, you know something will be coming out of the committee pretty soon probably you know hopefully it will be that towns won't lose money other towns won't lose money but those towns that are giving more will get more so they change the formula so it, 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 it's very positive that's been going on so I wanted to do that very good mr. bridal yes uh, the only thing I have is uh, we actually have uh, we have a couple members or at least three or four members from uh, uh, the Seacoast Education Association in the audience uh, they are here for a consent agenda item but I don't know if they want to get up and speak a little bit about their race if, if they would like to now would be the time to do that uh, if you got something that you want to publicize a little bit so sure. give them a chance okay Jackie why don't you come up with them I could see she's got something to say <laughs> <laughs> Jackie represents SESPA the uh, paraprofessionals and myself Sean Tierney the uh, Teachers Association so we'd like to run a we'd like to run a road race on Thanksgiving um, from the Academy down to the beach and back a five mile road race um, of, to raise funds for um, the schools um, I, we think it would be a great event we think that Portsmouth is they run a turkey trot every year and it's just enormously crowded um, and I think and a lot of people who really like to run don't can't really enter that race anymore because it's just so crowded so we thought a five mile not a 5k something a little different uh, that runners would really enjoy um, would uh, be a, a great um, alternative for runners to do that and a great way to you know promote good health and to make some money for the schools and are you going to have apple pies like that one in uh well actually <laughs> uh, we might have a we're probably going to have a turkey running and if you beat the turkey you will win a pie ah <laughs> uh -oh. well that sounds like it's be, a, be a lot of fun a lot of families involved um not too big though because it's our first year so it really won't be that large we we have it we're going to top off you know with 500 runners but we would be lucky to get yeah. that i mean if we get if we get 300 we'd be pretty happy yeah. um our first year out that would be you know profitable and a good time and be able to do that we have a professional timing company all lined up with chip timing um it's gonna it's gonna be a really fun time and, and people love to go out on thanksgiving morning and run a race so they can Eat all they want the rest of the everybody, <laughs> I, everybody I mentioned it to since you called me uh -huh. has mm -hmm. been very positive. Oh, great, to it. great. So I think you might have a lot of people. Good, good. No, we're, that'd we, be we really have, great. We have it plenty would of help, so we're really yeah. benefit the schools and it'd be a good time. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you for coming in tonight. All right, thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. That's it for me. Okay, Mrs. Wolseley. Yes, yeah, I agree with uh, Mr. Waddell uh, because I was there too as a member of the school uh, study committee and uh, excellent, excellent job. Everybody's doing a great job at the academy and we look forward to being able to rehab that beautiful old building and provide a good educational experience for the students many years to come. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good news to announce tonight. Uh, Captain Falcone, uh, there's a memorial uh, street and sign dedicated to him. He was a Hampton resident, a former Marine, an Army officer. Uh, he was killed in combat operations in Vietnam in 1964. His second great granddaughter, uh, with the Bean family, was born yesterday. Uh, Vera Bean will be coming home. And uh, the parents, Robbie Bean, my nephew and uh, Kayla which is the uh, the captain's granddaughter are uh, very pleased and uh, Hampton and the Bean family will take good care of that that youngster thank you oh, great oh, thank you, thank you. Hmm. and now we're going to move on to the consent agenda permit for use of town property for an antique car show parade and public gathering license which we just spoke of Corrective quick claim deed for the galley hatch. Four is street closure permit request for Hedmond Avenue between Elliott and Randall. And five is assignment of lease at I Street. Motion to accept the consent agenda. I'll second. All those in favor. I have just one thing oh, yeah. to say. <clears throat> On the uh, 
the antique car show asked you to go to 4 o'clock, and didn't the police say that there was a, something going on at the casino that night, and, and they would uh, prefer it ends at 2? Has that been worked out? I didn't see that. There's a concert that night. So yeah. And I, I think the police had said they would prefer that it... Wasn't there a thing on there, Fred, that Sawyer said? Yeah, they prefer it be... Uh, Canceled at uh, two o'clock. So I, I just wondered if that had been worked out between the. Is there uh, someone here from the um, car show right now? No, but I can. I also signed that sheet, and the reason we asked them for two o'clock is because we have a concert. We, we, we start working at four o'clock. So they know about that. They do. And the last I talked to Christina, she was swearing that she said that he could be at the lot by two. Oh, good. Okay, that's great. All right. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? No, no, in favor. I just one quick Unanimous. one quick comment. I'm uh, thank you very much, Fred, for continuing to put the no open fires on these uh, neighborhood gatherings. Oh, yeah, we don't want a problem. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay, approval of minutes for September 14th. I'll make the motion to approve them. Thank you. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Appointments. First, we have Christine. Christy, Christy I mean, um, the finance director. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, still feeling like California. You must be right at home. <laughs> um, you guys should have received a couple weeks back the August yep. financials. Um, it's the eighth report. For 2015 and the target is 66.67 percent the month's uh, total income without the capital reserve was 787,000 the motor vehicles came in at 232,000 which is over target by about two thousand dollars other major contributors this month were interest on taxes at 18,000 building permits at 20,000 highway subsidy at 89 9900 state water pollution control at 68,300 departmental income at 65,900 and the parking lots came in at 138,000 which puts them above, above last year by about 32,000 uh, franchise fees at 64,000 district court fines at 18,000 and the real estate trust at 43,000 the expense summary shows the year-to-date expenses by department. At the end of August, the operating departments without debt service but with open purchase orders are at 65.21% uh, of the budget, which is under the month's target by 1.46% or $341,900. I continue to note all of the different departments who had uh, line items that were over target. Um, I think I'll just read off the departments tonight because it's all in the narrative there. Uh, Board of Selectmen and Town Manager, Supplies and Expense Line, Trustees of the Trust Fund, Supplies and Expense, Election Administration um, has several accounts in there that were over target, but as a whole, they're at 67.67. Uh, .67. Finance, Supplies and Expenses, Assessing, uh, Contracted Services is still over the budget. Tax collection, tax liens and instruments is over target. Um, MIS, the four equipment related accounts when combined together are currently under at 60.4%, which is $5,000 under the budget. Financial administration as a whole is over target at 68.46%. Uh, most of that I think falls under uh, assessing being over for their contracted services. Uh, let's see, cemeteries, their contracted services and electric are both over target. Uh, the police department came in at 62.2% overall when you include the open purchase orders. And they have several lines there that um, are over target. <coughs> Fire department is at 63% overall with open purchase orders. Highways and streets is over target at 84.62 and that still goes mostly back to snow. Uh, municipal sanitation is running below target at 61.75 percent 
animal control is below their target, but overtime wages are overspent. Mosquito control is over target, but that is just due to the business of the fact that all of their spraying and stuff is being done now. They, they have a contract, so they will come in under or at target. Warren articles, uh, the past at the town meeting, you guys uh, should notice on the last page, page 15 of your report, you can start seeing some big activity taking place there. A lot of that money is uh, being spent and those projects are being completed. The 2014 encumbrances uh, show 61% have been expended to date. We have gone through that list with the departments and the ones that are on there do still need to be open and they do plan to um, use those purchase orders. In the special revenue funds, Fund 24 Recreation, the beach sticker donations year to date equal $12,979,000 with $21,602 being awarded in scholarships for kids and to go to the different camps and stuff. Fund 25, the cable committee fund balance continues to run above the 2014 uh, ending balance. Private detail, the activity for the summer has, that account has increased considerably from the month before with the different details and stuff that took place over the summer. EMS fund, the balance in uh, this account continues to grow as the activity increased over the summer. Wastewater system development charge, uh, the fees collected in August totaled $3,200, uh, bringing the balance to $154,000. That's, the board did ex um, some expenditures so once those expenditures have taken place uh, my projected balance is uh, $110,900 for that account so that wraps up the August financials if you guys have any questions questions mr. Waddell yeah I, just a couple sure if you don't mind that you've probably answered them anyways and I probably just missed it but under the revenue fire department permits, now that's up considerably, right? That was f budgeted 4,900 and we've collected 14,000. Yes. And that's because of those new? Yes. So that's really coming in quite nicely. Mm-hmm. Very nice. And motor vehicle permits are up, <coughs> right? And we still have September, October. Does it usually slow down in the fall or will they, the rate usually stay about the same? Of, revenue coming in we seem to be very consistent on how much we've been over uh the target it's only really about two thousand dollars over target so uh -huh. i would think that we'd probably at least remain at that level okay so i think april and may are their bigger revenue months if i remember correctly because all of the leases i think are due in there so okay mm -hmm. and uh under miscellaneous income miscellaneous what is income. that the one from the state or the one that's the town? Uh, 7850. 7850. It's budgeted. At 22000 Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the year, a lot of the things that end up in there do end up getting moved because okay. they're for other purposes. I actually did notice that, and I meant to look at that account, and I didn't look to see what's there. A lot of times, if we bill for something and it's only a one-time billing, um, it's run through that account and then after so that we don't have to set up new codes in our financial software and then once the money comes in we usually move it to the proper thing an example of that would be like the start billing for fire it runs through miscellaneous and then once it's paid it gets put into the proper uh, whether it needs to go into fund 27 or if it needs to go back into one of the other fire accounts so I need to look at that and um, see what accounts my guess is that number is inflated because the money needs to be moved somewhere else Okay, super. And parking lot revenues are still, above. And we still have more to come in. I yeah, mean, I hear there's another concert. I think Diana <laughs> just told us, right? I mean, so, that, so. so that's nothing but positive, right? Right, and that was only through August. So you still have September revenue to go in there um, from the Seafood Fest and um, Labor Day. All of that it hasn't been posted in there yet. And I had a question on, on workman's compensation. That was up? For the expense? Yeah, the expenses. Where was that? I believe we just got a credit in the mail on that on Friday, though, because of the, they bill yeah. you, they pre-bill you, and then once they do the audit, mm -hmm. they give you back a credit, and we usually just take that off of our next bill. I think okay. th I kind of feel like we got a credit of, like, 22000 I believe, that right. came in on, like, Friday. All right. 
and then a lot of the police stuff that's up at 100% and stuff is stuff that you paid one one time. Correct. Or it's or the summer stuff gas, that's yeah. now going to... Summer stuff, yep. All right. All right. And just a question that was here, and Fred probably can answer it too, grist mill. Is there anything going on that? Or? I don't know anything about Not that. currently. Not currently. Not. There are funds available there through 2019. Uh, we weren't going to do any work on jacking up the grist mill and replacing the foundations or realigning the foundations until we had a, a positive end result on what's going to happen with yeah. the dam. We want to make sure everything was dovetailed together. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Yep. Mr. Bridal? No, just uh, it, it looks like all our departments are, are, are fairly close, and that's actually pretty good considering the, the long winter we had and the uh, fairly dry summer with, with in in the crowds that we had at the beach. Uh, I know some of the some of the beach businesses are talking uh, that they are down a little bit, but the day trippers uh, were up, and so uh, to see that we can still try to keep it in line, I think you're doing a real good job. Thank, Thank you. you, Mrs. Mosley. Mm. Um, on the fire department permits too we have a new fire prevention officer and we have the secretary and I think the permits are being processed a lot faster than they were and the inspections yeah. are being done a lot in a lot more timely fashion which is really good they have a whole new process over there that is correct yes, on how that's they're excellent um, collecting the money and yep putting it over and everything Christy on August 31st <clears throat> your projected year-end savings you gave us a hundred and fifty five thousand nine sixty seven the year-end saving projection on the September 24 mm -hmm. calculation I hope I'm reading this right you've got 582817 is that because the manager froze some expenditures or yeah that well I guess yep. yeah. thought I'd ask yeah it is <laughs> okay is there anything that stands out Fred that you froze that is there nope. any big thing no, what we we did was we uh, we we really didn't freeze anything. What we said is all all purchase orders have to be countersigned, have to be inspected by finance, and have to be countersigned. Okay. So that constricted the number so of purchase screening. orders coming in. We're screening them. Okay. Good. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Bean. Mr. Chairman, I have no questions. Thank you, Director. Thank you, and you've done a great job. It's very concise, and uh, we appreciate everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have Diana Martin, Director of Parks and Recreation. I've been hearing people sing your praises all day long. Oh, really? <laughs> uh -oh. Yes, I hear that you've got something going up to that Oxford uh, casino that yeah. a lot of people are interested uh. in. I love that uh. trip. That's our new favorite trip. And then I heard uh, from Senator Preston about how what a wonderful job you're doing, um, making a great time for both senior people and kids and making sure that there's a lot to do. He pointed out some schools and stuff that we went by, and then he mentioned about what a nice job you do with these kids. Nice. I'll have thank to you. thank him for that. <laughs> now you got to live up to all that. Yes. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm trying he said best. you referred to Charlie as uh, some type of angel or something for helping you with your funding. Yeah, the capital. Yeah, that's the only way we were able to get, you know, the tennis courts, the basketball courts, all these things. For the, for the well, not many people refer to Charlie as an angel. <laughs> <laughs> I bet his I like mother Charlie. does. Well, they should. Yeah, yeah I'm sure his mother very does. Proud of them. Yep. Before we start, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to point out that uh, departments have done a good job on the budget. If you look at the bottom line of the town budget as a whole, uh, for 2016, it is only a $48,852 increase over this year, which is 0.018%. It's virtually nothing. So um, if you look at my budget, it's the same on both parking lot. Well, parking lot's a little bit changed, but um, the parks and recreation budget is the same. What I did do was I had to change a few things um, just to go with what we've spent in the past couple of years. So there were a few things that I don't buy every year. There were some things that I buy every other year. So I made some changes within the parks part of it. 
Uh, this year I would like to buy some Fibar, which is the um, uh, the product that goes under the playgrounds, the wood chips. Yep. They're called Fibar is the official name for those. And um, like I said, I don't buy that every year. So I put so many in there. We also would like to make some um, enhancements to the skateboard park. The area around the bowl needs something to um, hold on to. So we put I put some money into that. So basically, the, the only other changes that are in this budget are things that um, are written down, like they, uh, Christy put in the information about them, that they, it's either been underfunded for the last three or four years, or, or it just shows um, the increase or reflect the amount being expended from the line. So things have changed around, but the budget is the same. Questions, Mr. Wardell? Yes. Um, thank you. Thank you for what you do. And I always, it's always interesting to me that um, you put a budget together, and like with the the parks and recreate the parks and the, and the grounds maintenance and stuff. How many hours are those being used over the course of a year? Well, that uh, the hours that are on the fields. On the field, the the, the groups that are using it. Yeah, we have about close to 4,000 hours of programmed scheduled things so that they maintain the parks areas for 4,000 of programmed. That it's not including um, the tuck building which has to be maintained every week, the garages that have to be checked every week, um, also any special events that we have that they do set up for. And, um, and it doesn't account for all the people that use the playgrounds. They have to inspect the playgrounds every week. It also doesn't account for the skateboard park or the um, inline hockey rink where people, or any of the fields where people just come down to play ball with their children or whatever. Anything. Yeah, yeah. I think it's important when people look at a budget and they look at the price. You know, what what are they getting out of it? Yeah. And how much? How much, How often is that? field being used and I think that's very important to think about. Also, how many people do you service, would you say, your department service over the course of a year? Uh, I just kind of looked at that and we had served over 3,000 mm -hmm. just in the programming that we do, but that doesn't, that isn't including all the people we serve for parks, so you could add another three or four to that, so. All right, so, so you know, in effect, when you're looking at that budget, in the number of people it serves, the number of kids that it serves, you're, you're looking at a fairly good budget. Yeah, and adults well as well. put together in a, in, a, in a conservative budget. Yeah, and I did put in a warrant article this year because I, I would like to get my parks employee back to a full-time position because there's just not enough time <laughs> in the day to, to do all the jobs that are done. We've got some signs that haven't gone up yet this year. We just got playground equipment in for the Kids Kingdom playground that caps and things of that nature that need to go back up, and there's just not enough time in the day for them to do it. So we're a little behind right now. Thank you. Mr. Bridal? It, when people think of parks and recreations, they think of Tuck Field. Yeah. You know, that's what, that's what people think of our town. How many pocket parks do we have that, that you maintain? Well, we maintain 21 acres of property. We have Eaton Park, Lou Brown Field, there's Lock Road, there's a park, Five Corners, Ruth Stimson. Um, Gilbrick's Children's Park, the Gazebo, uh, Bicentennial Park, and the park over at the library. So there's quite, so quite a few. Quite yeah. a few. So it's not just mm -hmm. that it's not one just area. Tucky, no. And so it's all over town. When, right. So it, in some days it takes a while to travel around to all those different ones. So it's not mm -hmm. just, we're not looking at just Tuck Field. We're not right. looking at Eaton Thank Park. You. Um, and I know you schedule some of the stuff in some of the, the school fields too, mm -hmm. along with, I mean, although we, the schools take care of the maintenance of them, you're still responsible for making sure that the schedule gets there and, and those teams get Correct. done. So it's, yep. it's not, our parks system is a lot more. And then you, then you get the seniors right. and you get the trips and the events and um, so it's, it's a lot bigger than it actually is as, as uh, Jim said, and it's not just a small area. And then you have the parking lots. Correct. Uh, so um, when you look at that budget, there is a lot in there, but there's a lot to do. And I, I, I see a need for 
that full-time position. Definitely. Because, you know, my grandfather used to do the maintenance of the, of the, uh, Did he? the fields. And there was a lot in the summer, and they, he was full-time, and he still did some in the winter. And it's just gotten bigger since the 50s and 60s when he did it. Um, Kids' Kingdom is open all year now if people want to get on that on the playground, you know. Right, right. So you, you have to have somebody that's there to be able to watch that stuff. And there's all sorts of maintenance that can be done in the off, off totally. couple yep. of months. Mm -hmm. You know, it used to be that it was the off season was four or five months. Well, now it may be one two. month, two <laughs> one months, or two, maybe. Yeah. But there's so much stuff that can get done in that off season that uh, there really is a need for that. So thank you. <coughs> Mrs. Wilson. Oh, great job, uh, Diana. I have no problem with the budget. It looks good. Mr. B. And she brings in revenue. Yes, Don't she does. Don't forget revenue. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. B. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, I echo the gentleman's and the, the young lady's comments. You do a great job. It's a great yep. department. And I know that uh, um, your thousands of hours of scheduled uh, uh, recreation at, at the fields is important. And, but for the wee little ones, and I, I've got some grandkids in town, uh, and I'm not alone when I take my grandkids there, those are additional thousands of hours. And those parks are safe, those little playgrounds are safe, and the kids have a great time, and it, it, you really do a nice job, and thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. You. Chairman. And I think uh, Senator Preston said it best, you know, explaining how much you can do with that money that you get from the parking fund, mm. and uh, it makes a big difference. Yeah. And we're fortunate that it's, been it's worked out well. Yeah, it's been great for us. People forget, but it's nice to see that it is working so well. Yeah. So, any other questions? No. No. Want to talk about the parking lot real quick, Jim? Yes. Um, parking lot. The only change that you'll see there is um, the lease <coughs> goes up a thousand dollars every year. So I had to put a thousand dollars in the lease for the Church yep. Street parking lot. <coughs> and um, the water has consistently been very high, so I changed that from 600 to 900 so that we would cover the cost of water. So those are the only changes in the parking lot. Any other questions? Yep. No? I guess that's it. Okay. The parking lots are doing really well. We're up to like $550,000. Uh, they've anyway, done really, really well. We've done great this year, and we've got like 15 more concerts. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, Diana. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate right. it. Uh, yeah. Mr. Chairman, I, I have one more question. I think that for one thing, they have a lot of, uh, there's so many more concerts than there were in the past, so that certainly is helping. I agree. Mrs. Wilson. I, I actually have, to have two quick comments for Christy Pulliam that I forgot about. Is the Excel spreadsheet of the budget online mm -hmm. yet? Do you know? The PDF. No, no, the Excel spreadsheet. Remember, I've emailed a couple of times because I'm getting a lot of requests for people to be able to follow via the Excel spreadsheet. It, it looks just like what's in the books here. Oh, okay. okay. But it's online. Yes. And thank and you. all the details from page one all the way through the index. It's up there. Super. And thank you for the new format because you can read it. I think it's really nice new format. It makes format it much easier. With the print and everything. Thank you for that. Next we have Chris Jacobs, director of DPW. So I need to grab a chair. Yes, sir. <coughs> I brought the brain truck. It was a <coughs> We have Jennifer Hale and Teresa M and McGinnis as well. It was a team effort in putting Sorry. together the uh, budget, yeah. and uh, I may not yeah. have all the answers at the tip of my tongue. These ladies do at times. Uh, let's see. Let's see, 35. Budget presentation. Uh, the br budget we're presenting tonight is a uh, $137 less than it, the department requested <laughs> last year. Pleasure. Bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, the manager has further reduced our request by placing the $20,000 for household hazardous waste. Pardon, under pardon me, sir, just, and just because the young, young, young man sneezed, could you start right over again? Cause sure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the budget we have presented before you tonight is $137 less than what the former director presented last year. Uh, the manager further reduced our budget request on one line item, the uh, household hazardous waste, 
by twenty thousand. Um, we had put the twenty thousand in for household hazardous waste. We used to spend it on the dues for the fifty three B district. Uh, next year we have to run our own or should run our own uh, household hazardous waste. Um, we are in agreement with the manager's recommendation to make it a separate uh, warrant article to let the, the people decide. The, basically, the, uh, my marching instructions when we started to put together this budget was to basically have uh, truth in spending, not so much, you know, we hear all the ads all the time, truth in lending. Well, in this case, it's just truth in spending. Um, but I understand that, you know, if that's where we start, where we end up it could be somewhere different. Uh, in specific, like, for instance, streetlights, 215000 is what we request. The reason why we put truth in that is we spent 213 last year, 206 the year before. So it's just in keeping in with what the streetlights cost us. In the past, we haven't fully funded it, and we've just robbed Peter to pay Paul for streetlights. Rock salt, same thing. We've put in 80000 because we spent... 80245 because we spent 80539 in 2014 and 84191 in 13. So you can see it runs kind of consistent as far as the dollar cost. Um, drug testing, we put in, again, we're at 6128. Last year we spent 6116. The year before, 7714. Uh, 13 was an odd year. We couldn't get through to people that they actually, you know, we're joking today that when you, we send you for a drug and alcohol test, we don't expect you to pass. We actually expect you to show up having not had something to drink. Uh, vehicle maintenance, uh, we're at, we're requesting 90,000. We spent 68,492 already just on highway equipment. It's not including solid waste rolling stock. Um, it's just that's what we spent last year was 105. The year before that was 97,000. So with that many pieces of equipment that we have, it does cost that about amount of money to keep them maintained. Tires, brakes, front end alignments. Um, so basically that's the budget that I've given you. Now, uh, I had the ability to do the truth in, in spending because I honestly did have the reduction in solid waste what we pay for tipping, and what we pay for transportation. We got some very, very good bids in. Uh, you'll see some of that savings is shown up in those, those solid waste lines, but the only way I was able to bring in or bring forth to you to consider a budget that's less than last year is because I had that room <coughs> to work with. That was it. I don't have any specific lines to go through. I thought I'd leave it to the board. Okay, um, Mr. Waddell. Yeah, you're coming in less, yep. which is always great. Super. Are you comfortable that you're, that, that you're going to be able to cover yes. what you need to cover? Yes. Okay. If I'm not, you know, you've, you've probably seen a different direction in the department this year, and that it's a very much um, can do, get it done. Uh, Exeter Road got paved, Toll Farm Road got paved, uh, sidewalks outside of this building were in disrepair. You can see I directed the staff. They trained a few guys on how to use a jackhammer in the last couple of weeks. It's getting done. Um, we're going to work with the uh, uh, Hampton 2020 group doing the sidewalk over on Greg's. Jennifer's handling the High and Lafayette Street projects. So you can see it's a very much philosophy of applying it and getting it done. Um, I do a little more, except I'm holding back on, because we're, we're probably going to have maybe 100000 in our budget. If we have two winter storms, it wipes it out. For instance, tree removal is in there again at 26000 Have I done some tree removal this year? Yeah, we have. North Shore Road, there was a big dead tree. It was a safety issue. There was one in the park, safety issue. I've got 17 other trees that I've identified that need to come down. Mm -hmm. But I'm holding off doing it because I'm concerned. But to get back to answer your question, yes, if we had this money, we'd have another successful year. We would get things done. 
Side, more sidewalks will get done, trees will get removed, roads will get patched and repaired, things will get done. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Bridal. One of the things you're probably going to get a question on is <clears throat> the sand budget. And I look back, and if you want to explain that a little bit, if you could. Um, We're not using as much sand as we used to. Every year, let's say you end up with, you bought 2,000 yards, and every year you ended up with 500. Next year you bought 2,000, still got 500 left over. Well, guess what? We got 4,000 yards left over. It's a nice little pile. Um, I'm not, you know, I have a buddy that works down the, the Navy Yard, and they say they don't leave any dollar unspent. You know, at the end of the year, you spend it right to the line or you're going to lose it. Well, I had a lot of snow removal, so you'll see that there's nothing been spent on sand. In fact, we're going to Wednesday move the sand pile to a different location. Um, we'll better be able to better assess, but we have enough sand to get me through till the end of the year. I, I have salt stockpiles from the end of probably 800 ton that's left over. So I'm not running out to spend down a salt line and a sand line and a, any other line just for the sake of spending. Trying to we're trying to be good stewards of the public dollar that we're given. We're trying to get things done with it, like the sidewalks, but not just. But it's important to have those lines there because at some point in time, we're going to have to buy right. it. Right. We and did use a fair <laughs> amount of sand last year. We actually had more. We did use a fair amount of sand last year, especially on all the side streets, because the amount of icing through January and February. And I, I agree with you. I think, I think the public, from what I'm hearing from the public is, they are seeing that some of the stuff they voted on is actually getting done this year. Mm -hmm. uh, they're happy with that. Uh, everybody I, I, I've talked with is is uh, appreciative of everything that Public Works does. Um, you guys have had a tough year this year. Uh, it was, as I said earlier, it was a long, cold winter, right. snowy winter, and it's been a long, dry summer. summer. Uh, so you've had a lot of challenges, and I, I think you. Uh, your whole department has stepped up, yeah. um, and to come in with a budget that is technically less than last year, I think, is very commendable, and uh, I, I think we can move forward with it. I think it's not a problem. So, thank you. Yep. Mrs. Wilson. I think that it's premature to say that we're standing basically with the current year's budget because we have special money articles here to add personnel which we know we need but uh, all of that is expenses related to public works let me ask you really quickly and then I asked Fred briefly when I came in because I'm terribly disappointed in not seeing the washdown facility in here and I guess when we get to the Warren articles, you can explain why you had to prioritize what you've got in as a special article. But it just makes me so sad to lose another year when we can't wash those vehicles down. That is a concern. Are we assigning anyone to work with Bob Walker yet to pair up with him to learn his job? I'm terrified that if something... Chuck Siemens has been moved up to Mike Key's position. Yeah. Um, to fill Chuck's position, uh, Ryan Kelly moved the right. highway over to there. Right. Um, so Toby this week finally has his full complement, if you right. will. Um, Chuck does have some experience doing that kind of work in the past, especially when around this time of year, Bobby always went to the Freiburg Fair and mm -hmm. Mike went off apple picking. So. It isn't like they don't have any experience, but I, I do hear what you're saying. They need to be given more experience, mm -hmm. more exposure to it. Um, now that Brian Kelly's there, like, for instance, Freiburg Fair's first week of, you know, I think it starts the 4th or the 9th of October, uh, I'm sure Chuck will be given some of that work. And Brian will be able to and do it as an understudy. Yeah. Yeah, but Brian can can lead the other crew. Okay, because I'm really concerned about yep. that facet of the operation. Um, salt shed. Is there a better way? I know w this was discussed with Mr. Noyes a couple of years back because that salt shed 
in addition to sitting under power lines, is pretty exposed. And I don't know if you have any idea how much salt we lose or not because it's so exposed. <coughs> is there any way to, to shield it a little better from the, is it the east side? I think it's the east side. Well, I don't we, know if that's a big concern. We have looked at that operation. Hmm? Sand is now going to get moved from the end of the garage to the, if you were at the transfer station, the back side yeah. of the salt barn. Gotcha. The area that they mix sand and salt in is actually going to be closest to your transfer station. Uh -huh. You know where there's a little, there's a ramp there where we, yep. where we load? The decision was made not to rebuild that ramp. So we're re instead of, we used to run back and forth between the sand pile and the salt pile. Yeah. They're now under my insistence, they're Good. in one area. Good. So it's going to cut down on the running. Right. We still need the end facing the marsh to unload the trucks, but yes, something like a heavy canvas tarp or something like that right. could be dropped down to Some kind cut of down on the wind. Yeah. The other end is where we would unload and, and the mix. moisture coming in. Yeah, I know that, but I just that concerns me because salt is money too. Right. Um, have you, um, Fred? Done, given any thought to that snow insurance, I know you have a Warren article in there for another means of funding, but it, is that something we can perhaps explore with the Public Works Director just to get kind of prices? We're going to take a look at it. <coughs> it's um, difficult. We've already talked to one company and they said they wouldn't even discuss it with us. Uh -huh. um, we had a bad winter last year. Oh, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, everybody knows it, which doesn't help us at all. Well, so. it wasn't just us. <coughs> well, no, but yeah. the seacoast was a was a badly hit area, yeah. and uh, that's we found that that's having an effect. Yeah. I just so we'll continue to, to look. I hate to see us have to set up more funds. We have funds coming out of our ears, but if he needs help this winter, like he did past winter, um, I know that you. You know, you are thinking uh, insurance about claims, of course, take sometimes six or seven months, uh, even at the best, before you get money. Yeah. Uh, so it's it may not even even if we had the fund uh, or the or the policy, I should say, and we had something bad happen between now and January first, it might not be until June of next year that we actually get the money, yeah. which would be too late for to affect this year's budget. It's a catch twenty-two. It always is. The other thing that concerns me, first of all, Jen did a great, great job. Thank you so much for giving us a rundown on the, on the construction projects. That's a big help. I really enjoyed reading through that. And if you have questions from residents, I think it helps. It certainly helps me to be able to refer to that. Um, Chris, the other thing that really concerns me is the shoulders of the roads. Mm -hmm. because the shoulders are, you know, we crews used to go out and do that and beef up the shoulders, but it's really degrading a lot of the pavement. And the four corners, Mace Road, Anne's Lane area is awful. Yeah. And the southern part of Landing Road is in big trouble. Uh, not the main Landing Road, but across <coughs> the street where Peter Tilton is. Yeah. I, it's bus turns around down there that's that's a big problem with the pavement you've done a good job I can just see more things popping up and and I'm not happy about having things segregated in warrant articles I'd rather have them in your budget but we'll tackle that beast when we get to it mr. Bean thank you mr. chairman uh, director assistant director and uh, Teresa thanks so much appreciate it very much thank, thank you and I appreciate that you're working hard to uh, to be a good steward of the <coughs> town's assets and uh, money that's been put aside. And being able to return some of it to the taxpayers goes a long way to make yep. everyone feel better. And your job must be easy with these two girls there to help you. <laughs> ladies, ladies. They uh, keep me in line. Oh, good. <laughs> Teresa's done a lot. How long have you been there now, Teresa? Since I first started working with the town. It's almost That's like asking right her age. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <it's laughs> probably not a good when idea. I started working. Um, <laughs> 1974. Well, congratulations that you've been 
Dr. A good draw. And well, you do such a great job. It makes a lot of people feel great. So thank you. Mrs. I, I have a quick question for Fred while while Mr. Jacobs is here. The Sun Valley Beach cleaning. Do you want to? I know it's later on in the agenda, but do you want to discuss that while Chris is here? Or sure. Fred? Yeah, because it's only fair that he be here. Yeah, I think I'd be more comfortable if I hear from him on that. He he did ask to have it put on the agenda, and we we certainly have done that. So as long as we have him in our clutches. Well, I'm not sure about the clutches. Woo. <laughs> He had requested that the Board of Selectmen approve a, uh, a single source vendor contract for cleaning the South uh, the Sun Valley Beach in 2016 uh, and to give policy waivers on the purchasing policy on sections 718-3, 718-4A, and 718-16. Would you like to add to that? Yeah, we currently have a contract with KD Landscaping. Um, he went out two years ago and purchased a beach rake. The beach rake cost him 53000 So it's a um, the reason why the ice list him as a sole source provider is not everybody's walking around with a $53,000 beach rake in their backyard. Um, the other reason um, I'm recommending him again is there was probably six times during the summer, he would just call me randomly to say, hey, want to let you know I'm done beach raking for the week if you want to go see it. Um, is there anything else I need to do, anything to be aware of? Um, he was Mr. Dependable. Uh, didn't have any equipment breaks down. I had zero complaints from people over at Sundown. Um, so it w when taking over a directorship, it was a relief to have somebody like him handling that aspect of the work. And I'd be pleased to have him back again this year. Questions, Mr. Waddell? No, sir. Mr. Bridal? My only question is, yes, we have some valley. Do we do anything north of Place Cove on the beach there? Do we ever have any, do we pick that area or do we, does it, is it able to be raked? A seal once. Um, we have had, you know, to go down there once or twice for s some hand work, but nothing. Uh, There's no real soft hand. sand there because the, the tide yeah. comes in, yeah. so it would just be um, hand, hand picking right. and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Other than that, um, real only other real issue we handle is that uh, Japanese seaweed uh, right next to Bicentennial Park. Mm -hmm. it seems to be that natural hook in the ledge it traps it all in there, so it doesn't end up further down the beach, and we take it. When it gets <laughs> odorous, we take it out of that location several hundred tons at a time. Well, I, I've been over to uh, the Sun Valley part of the beach a number of times this year, and, and this gentleman is doing a real good job over sure. there, and I got no problem with it. So thank you. Mrs. Wilson, where do they put the beach rakings, Chris? I mean, like, what happens with the seaweed and whatever? Where do you, where do you put it? He ends up bringing that over and it passes right through his waist because he doesn't end up with much sand. His, right. his rake looks more like a corn harvester than a, than but a rake, so. the raking is anything like what we were getting before from the state? Are you finding a lot of stuff, discards, umbrellas, uh, whatever? What? Not the big stuff. I, uh, maybe he's calling that out ahead of time, but it's the, uh, you know, the bottles, bags, diapers. Uh, sandwich baggies, things like that, left left out on the beach. The bigger things like a bodyboard or an umbrella or a lawn chair. Uh, a lot of times, I think he's just—I don't know for a fact. I can ask him, but I think he's just literally hand picking that out, okay. rather than letting it go through the machine. Okay. Now, I have no doubt that this is a nice gentleman doing a good job, but I also have a problem with the amount. Um, $15,200 in this context. A couple years ago, two years, three years, Fred, two years maybe, when the state stopped doing this, the suggestion was that we approach Seabrook because, of course, Sun Valley is a very small area and Seabrook does <coughs> send its uh, maintenance individuals up to rake their own beach. Um, and I believe there was an overture made to Seabrook 
to see if they would be interested in helping us out by breaking that little piece of Sun Valley. I guess at that time it went nowhere. But now I'm given to understand that we are providing uh, services of Marine One for water rescues for Seabrook. Is that true? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, I, I've been I don't know of any calls that have been over there. I okay, been I've been about. told that we are providing, um, I, I would like to find out about that. Uh, they have their own boat. Well, I did. did may I, like may I, I just say, make I a point of order? Sure. Are we talking about breaking? So or, I was wondering boats? if we could do a little cooperative, if that's the case, because that's different <coughs> than road rescues <coughs> and just sending the ambulance down the highway. But I'd like to investigate that a little more. This isn't going to come up. Um, let's see, is this in the budget or is it in a special article? I thought I read it in a special article. I don't remember because it was got a huge pile. But um, I'm just a little worried about that dollar amount. It's, it's in the budget. Um, <coughs> the problem here is that we bid this several times and uh, we, we only got one bidder. Every right. time we bid it, and it was this particular I, person I because nobody owns a rate. I can see that. Uh, I did go and meet with the town manager, and I did talk to two of the selectmen in Seabrook, and they have absolutely positively no interest in doing anything on the Hampton end of the beach. I think we were talking about 5000 or something like that. Well, so. we, we told them to name their own, <laughs> name their own price, and yeah. their, their price was zero. We won't do it. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that has something more to do with the fact that they have three miles of beach. Oh, yeah. And uh, and in doing that, uh, they would have to uh, incur additional expenses for overtime and so forth. And, uh, well, it's just a matter of their union contracts require certain things and our union contracts <coughs> require certain things. So it became impossible to reach an agreement with the between the two towns in this area. It was kind of like... Um, when we had the agreement to help move sand from the, the uh, dredging of the, uh, the harbor uh, onto, uh, onto the beaches, and, and there was a, a falling out, and uh, since that day, nothing has happened between the two towns. So. Okay. Well, it's just a thought, but I'm just a little nervous about that price. Mr. Uh, there's incredible uh, real estate value uh, down in that neck of the woods. I'm down there consistently. Uh, those people don't uh, ask much for town services. Uh, they would require a clean beach, and it's a beautiful area. I run down there all the time. This outfit, I've spoken with the owner. I have observed their operations. Uh, it's important that we keep that clean. Uh, we have liabilities down there. Uh, as uh, the director has said, he maintains uh, close communications, and it is an extra set of eyes for us down there. Uh, from a very uh, reliable and important subcontractor, uh, it will be very difficult to find someone else to perform that service at that location exclusively. Uh, and I, f I fully support it. And uh, I think the director has worked hard at it. And again, uh, it's brand new gear. It's reliable. And that beach always looks beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. So now, who does own that rake? He does. He Katie does. Katie Lansford. Yeah. So that's a good thing. We did ask if... He'd be willing to sell it to us so we could do it ourselves. Uh, He's may and he was looking at other con possible contracts. If he only uses it one day a week for us, he might move it to another beach to use for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't interested in selling it. And then when I asked how much he'd paid for it, what was the new one to cost, he sent me the forward me the company's latest sheet. And Fifty-three thousand was the municipal price. Well, that's what the, the extra money's for, then. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll make, uh, we need to I'll, vote on that? I'll make yes. a motion that we uh, we accept the single source vendor for the Sun Valley Beach Cleaning in 2016 with a purchase price of... 15 2 this 15 2 is a Yeah, I think we need does. that in there. 15 2, yes. Yeah. Of yes. 15 2. I'll second it. All those in favor? Four and I, I'm, no, I'm going to abstain right now because I haven't one got abstention. my head around it. Thank may you very I ask, much. Whoop, may I ask the Public Works Director one more question? Yeah. Uh, solid waste. Trash. You're inundated now with more development, more building. 
how close are you to going underwater or how comfortable are you handling what you've got? You've got to rehab the transfer station uh, with another, what have you got in the money article? How, and you're using, I imagine, a lot of time on pickup. Where are we with trash as far as percentage of effort in the department's time? Well, when we, when we operate, if you will, on the bubble or the curve, it's that 13 weeks. It's not so much the new residences, let's say the a Dalton Lane or a Litchfield or uh, mm -hmm. a new Hilliard that's going to be the issue. Um, it's the uh, volume that comes off the beach. Yeah. Um, critical weekends were, of course, the holiday weekends. Um, mainly because the transfers, well, if waste management's closed for the day and the beach isn't, that's where the problem arises. Uh -huh. So, for instance, like that Sunday, Monday holiday, where we may be, the only way to expand the bubble is to extend, expand our uh, transfer capability, meaning basically those 100 cubic yard trailers. Uh, we've noticed this year, now that they've in, been in service for three years, uh, trailer one and trailer five have had issues with the pusher. Uh, we've had extensive hydraulic issues with those. Um, so, and the other thing we experienced in the spring was a fire in trailer one. Someone threw away uh, hot ashes and uh, like a pellet, wood stove pellet stuff, and it got into the, got mixed in with some furniture and smoke started pouring out of the trailer. Wonderful. Um, so if we had lost that trailer and it had to have, you know, it replaced in the middle of that 13 week <coughs> period, we'd have been stuck. Mm. We'd have been very, it would have been very expensive to rent another trailer. So the capacity of the transfer station, if you will, what we call the throughput capacity, is sufficient as long as all three compactors are running. Yeah. It's the trailers that are going to as the town grows and the volume of that refuse grows, um, particularly in that 13 weeks, then we will need more hauling, more trailers to haul. Now, one of the articles in our pile, our 51 article pile, relates to an additional three employees for Public Works, which right. I know you need. Help me out, the three additional employees, where would they be assigned? Is that part of the waste? We'd actually have the waste. A, a road crew. Yeah. Right now, there were many weeks during that 13-week period of two people took a vacation out of solid waste, even because we put all pieces of equipment, all the collection, the green collection trucks on the road. Yeah. We robbed highway to the point where... Right. Al Jones was the worker and the foreman, wow. or it was Al Jones and Russ Nickerson after Russ got done sweeping wow. for three hours. Yeah. So um, having three additional workers would then allow us to put together, you look at this time of year, this eight weeks after we stop trash collection, the, the focus right now is mill and patch, everything that you can get milled and patched before it gets too cold. Right. So. Um, that's why when you asked me about what, a week ago, when is leaf pickup going to still happen, yeah. we try and push that out just as far as we can yeah. so that we get the most of the milling and the patching done because we've, we've got a list of 20 to 30 places, none of them small, some of them as big as what we're sitting in collectively for paving that you literally have to mill out. So having no, if we get those three people, we will have a crew that during the summer can now respond to potholes and some do some milling and some patching and some resurfacing when it's best to get it done. It sounds like you're really got a good, you know, that you have a good handle on it. And the public is very, very happy with the way the trash is. The bleach has never looked better. You do a wonderful job. And we're so glad that you can keep up with all the other things that you have to. And with, uh, more money coming in in the future, you know, hopefully the public will look at your request and look at it the way it should be looked at. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions? Seeing none. 
When are we doing rolling stock? Are we doing that in conjunction with Chris's warrant article, Fred? That's up to the board. <clears throat> it might make more sense to do it in conjunction with the Warren article. Well, it would probably make more sense to do that because that's where you're talking about equipment. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for coming in tonight, ladies. We appreciate it. And gentlemen. <laughs> He's outnumbered. Uh, there's nothing that's wrong weird. with that. <laughs> now, what about the trustee? They're coming in the 19th of October. Moving on to the town manager's report, Mr. Thank Walsh. You, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, I'd just like to take a moment here this evening to uh, thank Arthur Moody uh, for contributing to our collection of accident resolves of the New Hampshire legislature. Uh, he has provided us with volumes for the years of 1702 through 1828. Oh, wow. He's also filled in a, a void uh, in 1943 for a volume we did not have. So. We certainly didn't expect that, but we're very thankful for it. It helps us doing research for the town where we need to do that. The uh, James House will be conducting tours on October 11th at 3 p.m. and October 25th at 1 p.m., as well as uh, having spinning and weaving demonstrations. Uh, on October 29th, uh, the Spirit Chasers uh, Paranormal Research <laughs> Team will present their findings on paranormal <coughs> activities in the James House at 6.30 p.m. in the North Hampton Library. They could so, probably help us. If we can get the spirits going in our direction, maybe we can get some extra work done. Paving operations on Toll Farm Road are complete, with work continuing on roadside cleanup and dress up. Uh, we have some additional uh, work to do on, uh, some small work to do on Exeter Road. I, I realize that uh, I received a message today that we had a, a drainage problem at one location that's been corrected. Uh, Public Works has gone up and reinstalled curbing that was there, and, and that, that particular situation has been taken care of. And I think that's very good. They've been working diligently to try to get that done. Um, and I'm sure the James House will, will like it. I did note today, and I don't know if anybody has brought this to the Board's attention, that uh, um, the guest ship that has been grounded at the beach or the marsh uh, is gone. It, it had an article uh, in the Hampton it, Union. Yeah, it sailed off to uh, to oblivion. I understand so, uh, and I'm sure that people who are not in town right now would like to know that. So I'm mentioning it. Um, we did receive a letter or a, a request from the uh, uh, the beach commissioners with regards to finishing up uh, the agreement for the fire station property and the, the old fire station property and and that includes uh, putting up a shed the town had promised and we are proceeding to work on that that uh, application it's a it's a forty six hundred and twenty nine dollar expense and we'll be doing that sometime this year just to make sure that our contractual agreements are carried out with the, those folks that we have to deal with on a regular basis uh, I have not Heard anything back from any of the board members on um, the uh, cable contract? I, I did give you uh, a list of three potential items that could be done, and I, I really think at some point in time the board has to get together and and uh, have a meeting strictly strictly on that and nothing else, just so that we can uh, try to get that done. Uh, the other thing was that I asked the fire chief to take a look at the old. Shell gas station at the corner of Winniconnet Road and Route 1. Yeah. And he has written a letter. Uh, he found three violations of the NFPA code. And he has written a letter to the, uh, uh, the property owners requesting that they take immediate action to correct those code violations. And part of that has to do with the material that's been allowed to grow and collect and, yeah. and, and so forth that's now in danger of catching fire if somebody should. Uh, yeah do the wrong thing down there, and he's asking that to be cleaned up. The poor bank next to that. Yes. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Okay, questions for the town manager. Mr. Waddell, Mr. Bridle. Um, I got a, a, a couple. A um, number of weeks ago back, we we had a, um, we dealt with um, the Conservation Commission, and they, they had come in and asked about a pay raise for one of their, their uh, their employee. We also at that time received a letter from the tax collector and the yes. town clerk 
Um, and rightly so, this board decided to take no action on that. However, I think that we should at least send a letter to the, because they sent a letter to us, I think it's only respectable that we send them back a letter stating that because they are elected officials that we decided not to deal with that. And I would, I would hope that this board would, would, would want to do that. So, I mean, that would be. Okay, does anyone have a problem with that? I think we have a consensus to do that. I okay. don't have a problem with it. And on that, in that line of thought, Rusty, as we're going through the budget, I don't want to see us addressing the salaries of the tax collector, town clerk, the elected officials, only their staffs, because that will be between them and the budget committee, because we really have no authority over their salaries. Well, we'll it, wait till we don't right. do it. I mean, that could be in the budget. That's just but thank you up for bringing them. that up. That's but. good. The other other thing is is um, I know you had a preambulation. Is it preambulation? Per ambulation. Yes. Per. It's a per. It's not a per. A it's free. A per. per. Uh, in in Seabrook this week, and if uh, I'm sure we have some coming up from our other towns, and if I have I have two that I'm about to schedule, and I'm going to suggest that uh, I pick people up in a car just so we don't miss them. Um, <laughs> uh, the towns of Stratum and Exeter are the next two to be right. done. And I think it's important that I'd like to get as many selectmen there as I can. Okay. I think that's important. Mr. Woolsey, I'm going to pick you up. So uh, when we schedule that. I've done all the perambulations of all of the boundaries yeah. over the years. Uh, we'll, we'll get these done this year. And, and uh, I believe the following year we have the remainder, which is Hampton Falls and Northampton. Correct. Okay. Northampton is the easy one. Hampton Falls is not so easy. So, uh, I'm, well, <laughs> you may have to in a couple of cases. Uh, we get those scheduled, and I'll let everybody know where they are. And uh, I'm going to pick you up. I need to know in advance. Yep. Because of my schedule. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Um, and we'll we'll get this thing finished. Good. Excellent. All right. Other than that, it's glad to have you back. Thank you. It's good to be back. It was probably nice for you to go, but we're glad to have you back. Well, it was nice to go, but it was too hot to survive. It was terrible. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Wilson. Uh, Fred, we have a quick claim deed in here, and it's it's very nice, except it doesn't say where the pro I'm, I assume it's by the ocean or something, but it's talking about uh, the uh, the parcel that's given to us in the quick claim deed. But I can't figure out where the land is. Meadow Land, Hampton, New Hampshire, but that doesn't ring a bell with me. So I just, I don't. Is it underwater? I don't. I just don't yeah, know. Where I think that's part of the area that's that's uh, off of um, Ocean Boulevard, as you get out to, past Boar's Head. And uh, it's out there on the marsh. Uh, I figured it was. Yeah, it's one of those lots that is there on paper, but you can't find it. Okay. okay. Well, like the owner unknown lots that are out there? Yeah. Uh, well, they're, they're known owners, but we just can't find the lot because it's out there in the middle of nowhere. But this removes the, the property from the tax rolls, and at least we clean it up officially. We do, and there is at least two town meeting articles that dictate that the selectmen are to attempt to receive all of those wetland parcels out there okay. and give them to conservation for permanent preservation. So we're clearing the decks and... More or less, yeah. yes. Thank you. Oh, wait, I'm not the property liability trust. Let's see, are we... Do we have to... Oh, that's okay, that old comes business. up next. Old business. Any yeah. other questions? No, nope. thank what you. What about Fred. all the questions you had for Mr. Welch when he wasn't here? You want to ask those well, now? Well, the questions are all gone for now. I'll think of them. I'll get some <laughs> more questions for him. I don't want to... Oh, you had plenty when he I wasn't here to answer them. them. I there. thought maybe you'd like the chance to ask them. Mr. Bean. Yes, I would <laughs> like to ask the town manager a question. And uh, given last week's meeting and... Uh, last week's paper uh, as the representative to the budget committee. Uh, there was an email today, and I spoke with Mr. Welch. I, I, I believe you were copied, Mr. Griffin. And um, I love the way the, the budget is being presented. And then we've got Warren articles. So there's a dichotomy, and they're two different events. See Mr. Lapham's here tonight. 
uh, the budget chair did uh, request uh, a copy of the warrants. There's millions of dollars of warrants that the voters will get to uh, decide as it's planned now. And there was a request for a copy of the warrants, and I forget the exact draft. Uh, and and right. so yeah. I don't want to get yelled at. I don't want to get fired. Um, and I would like the board uh, and Mr. Welch and you, Mr. Chairman, to communicate how this is going to get back to uh, the budget committee um, so I don't get yelled at. And so there was the request, and I would ask that you and Mr. Welch address that. Thank you. If you can. What would you like to say, Mr. Welch? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I knew that was going to make it around the table. I just don't know how. Uh, Mr. Chairman, draft warrant articles are exactly that. They're draft. Uh, unless this board votes to release them, in which case I would say that you intend to put every one of those warrant articles in the warrant. And I'm not going to recommend that you put every one of those warrant articles in the warrant. <coughs> they're, they're thought processes, and you need to decide what goes in the budget, what goes into the warrant, and what goes into the trash bin. And I su suggest to you that several need to go in the trash bin. Um, I can't release them because they're drafts. They're not, they're not 91A materials. If we get to the point of starting to release every draft that everybody does, then every piece of paper that the, every board member here writes at home, put a note on, is, is fair game. And the same with everything that happens in the town hall. The rules are that once you accept them, then they are public documents. You haven't accepted them. And I'm not going to foreclose anything you may wish to do with that property. Um, by saying we should hand them out. That's your function, not mine. I only prepare things that are given to me and try to give them to you, and then it's your job to determine whether or not they should be distributed and, and taken as non-draft items. So what's your estimate of when these will be available? You've got another meeting next week. You've got a meeting Wednesday. You have a meeting um, the following Monday. To, to, to finish discussing the general discussion on the, on, the, right. on the budget. I would say that when you finish that, you should start the discussion on the warrant articles mm -hmm. to determine what goes in this budget, what doesn't, what goes on to the warrant, and what goes in the trash can. Yeah. Uh, at that point, as you discuss those warrant articles <coughs> and go through them, they are releasable individually as you go through them. And I don't want to hold them back to the budget committee. I understand what the process is. Um, but I, I don't want to hand out warrant articles that are drafts that are never going to be considered mm -hmm. because that may cause a lot of discussion that's unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Let's get to the real meat and bones here and, and actually get the good stuff done and get discussion on the right, the right articles. Those that are going to get disposed of, mm -hmm. we shouldn't waste our time talking about. Yeah. And so I know that every year that this is a, an issue that comes up. It is. And uh, we're going to do our best to make it go as smoothly as possible. Absolutely. Okay. And just following Thank up, Mr. Chairman, if I may, with yeah. the town manager's coming. So uh, I would uh, infer implicitly that uh, explicitly tomorrow you could perhaps send an email uh, to the budget chair and uh, have that response. Okay. If, that's if that's what, what you prefer. And yeah. this is the member to the committee, and I just want to, I don't want to get yelled at. If that's what the board wants to do, I think it's a practical solution to try to get to things. So we're really discussing. You could probably get 15 or 20 of those articles done in one night, mm -hmm. yeah. and then we can hand them out. Yeah. Yeah. But Mr. I think you need to have first shot at them. Okay, great. Mr. That, that's what I was going to say. Friday. This is our working copy. This is our, our thoughts, our ideas, what, what people are proposing. It's not what's going to come out of the funnel at the end. And I think before we start sending all draft <clears throat> paperwork to the Budget Committee, um, we need to look at make sure that this is what we want you know, because right now it's just talking, and there's no sense in getting people excited or frustrated because of, of they see all these warrant articles. As the town manager has said, they are just draft version of warrant articles. So until they become regular warrant articles, after we've had our chance, we just got them this week. We haven't even had a chance to talk about them or discuss them. As he said, we may be able, we may want to just. Uh, totally take some of these out. We may want to put some of them into the budget. But before we start sending them off to the budget committee, let's have that, that part of the work done. There's still going to be plenty of time for them to get to them, plenty of time for them to do it. I just don't think it's important at this time to send them to the 
budget committee. So, do you want a, a motion? Uh, Are you looking for a, a consensus or a, or a motion? Or just I'm not looking for anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think a consensus is fine. Okay. I think Very good. Thank you. In Mrs. Wolseley? In years past, the Budget Committee used to get frustrated at getting word of the Warren article, say, in December or early January. And it, it is tricky when you're putting a budget together. Oh, yeah. There are some things that I'm sure we can dispose of right away, like the police forfeiture fund, big yeah. deal. Right. Or maybe the 300000 in the road. Capital Reserve. Capital Reserve yeah. fund. So there are probably a couple that we'll be able to shoot off to them within. Oh, I suspect there's more than a couple. Right. But at least there are some that are really non-controversial, standard, boring, boring articles. So I don't have a problem with uh, releasing them in a timely fashion once we've had a chance to review. Thank you. Moving on to old business. The property liability insurance hearing. Are you going to join us? Yes. Oh. Mr. Gerald? Yes. Thank you. Um, earlier this year in the summer, the property liability trust announced to its members that it was no longer going to be mm -hmm. writing coverage for property liability and workers' compensation. And of course, we've been members of the Municipal Association and its trust since 1987. So we've had a lot of years, probably long, as long as any mm -hmm. municipality, uh, with these coverages and with the member agreement. Um, over the course of time, we have, on two occasions since Fred has been manager, put these coverages out to bid to see if the kind of deal we've been getting is a good deal or whether we can improve on that. And on both occasions, we not only had very few uh, bidders, but those who did bid, the municipal association trusts, uh, were the low bidders. And so we remained with them. And as for last year's budget, we were given, uh, surprisingly or not, some decreases mm. in the costs of those, which was very helpful. Um, and so the Municipal Association trusts, for uh, whatever reason, um, uh, got discouraged from some of the rulings they got from the hearing officer and the Bureau of Securities Regulations uh, proceedings, uh, which have been concluded, by the way, and decided that it would stop writing as of July 1, 2016. And as you can imagine, there are many members like us who felt that that wasn't to our best uh, benefit just to have uh, one risk pool, Primex, be a bidder. So uh, they uh, have been convinced, that is the Municipal Association, to take one more stab at getting approval to write coverages from the uh, same hearing officer who heard the original proceedings. And uh, they filed a petition, and uh, there has been uh, hearings that have been scheduled for October 6th, 7th, and 9th as to what benefit there is for having the <coughs> Municipal Association Trusts as part of the choice. Mm. Um, initially, the uh, Wendy Parker, the executive director of those trusts, um, put out a request to have municipalities write in letters of support and she gave some sample language that could be used for such a letter but invited municipalities to adapt those letters and we were one that did adapt the letter and gave some of our own experience uh, unfortunately those letters weren't uh, didn't have much effect uh, with the with the hearing officer and so uh, They've decided that they will take advantage of this opportunity of the three days' worth of hearing to have live witnesses come in of municipalities to, to give their experience, and especially the municipalities who have put these coverages out to bid, as we have, to testify about the experience. And so uh, Ms. Parker asked me if I would testify. Um, I can say not only uh, about the experience we had when we went out to bid, but also with the very positive experience I've had uh, with working with the property liability trust claims personnel with numerous claims over many years. Uh, it's been a very positive experience. Um, I'd hate to see us not have the choice. That doesn't mean we would ultimately go with the municipal association, but at least uh, if there is more than one nonprofit pool in the mix, at least we have a better chance of getting good rates. And so uh, because they have not been, by the way, um, 
uh, sanction to do business uh, starting July 1 of 2016. Next year, they've been unable to give us firm figures to include in budgeting for this year, as they have in past, and have given us estimates to include. And so the quicker these hearings are concluded and the quicker the Municipal Association knows that it will or will not be in business, the better able we are to uh, obtain firmer prices, uh, either through them or through other places uh, next year. Um, I indicated to uh, Ms. Parker that I would not be able to testify unless this board indicated its approval for my doing so, much as you do when we go to testify on various pieces of legislation because it is speaking for the town. And so I would ask uh, your approval to appear as a witness on one of those three dates. Okay, questions, Mr. Waddell? Uh, no, I think it's a good idea. I mean, you sh we should have two. Yeah. And, and we need it, and I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Mr. Brattle? I'd love to see more than two, but yeah. at least two, and I, I think it's a good idea that you go speak. Mrs. Wilson. Yeah, I'll move that we authorize council to appear in our behalf at whichever hearing <coughs> is appropriate. I second. I totally agree. So first and second. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank now you. Now make sure you give Mark the right date. <laughs> He's got three to pick from. <laughs> <laughs> Other if, uh, if there's anything else anybody wanted to chat about. Well, uh, one thing um, that I wanted to ask about now we have we need to have a little um, meeting either before or after is it too late to notice something for on Wednesday no not technically we can do that as long as we do it before tomorrow night yeah for the to <coughs> discuss um, the uh, job performance for the town manager and the assistant town manager. <laughs> so did anyone here want to do well, it? That's a, that's a non-public session, so you can move during your meeting to go to into a non-public session to do that. So we'll do it after? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Or before, right. does make a difference. Does anyone have a... Um, it's easier for me after. Yeah, and I think it works better that way. Yeah. It's, fine. It's, fine. it's fine with me, too. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know if there was any other item we yep. should discuss tonight. Well, I'll see you on Wednesday. Discussing uh, old business. Um, maybe I'll go first because then I'll, you might have something to say about this. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to try to um, just give a little brief uh, of what happened at the Hampton Area Commission meeting. And I, you know, we've been working on the. Um, uh, the master plan and making some changes to it and there it was pretty exciting when the, um, the gentleman that is in charge of it brought back his findings and that and I think really it surprised a lot of people um, some of the suggestions that he had and it's not that the suggestions are just going to happen the way that he suggested it them. They're all going to be many different possibilities, and it's going to take some time to figure out what the priority is going to be. But <clears throat> I can give a little bit of a um, one of the th things that was interesting um, that was suggested was possibly making Ashworth Avenue two ways, and which was at one time discussed here many you know, at the Board of Selectmen as being yeah. a possibility and they had some the gentleman had some unique things to bring up so it was very very informative and the reason why I'm mentioning this too is I think a lot of people out there that you know may want to follow this project because it has it could be very different and people may want to comment on it so that's one of the possibilities that they would make uh, Ashworth Avenue two ways and when it goes down towards the end to the southern part where it turns around they're talking about signaling um, that particular corner and you know many there's many possibilities for that corner um, as there are many possibilities in this plan that's being discussed but it also could be some may possibly a roundabout or uh, 
you know, it's going to be discussed over and over again. So if anyone has some uh, something to say, they should be paying attention. Another thing is, as it goes up um, Ocean Boulevard, uh, it's been suggested that Ocean Boulevard be have like two-way traffic going north, and when it gets to a certain place, uh, possibly some of the parking spaces that the state currently has would be, they could lose as many as 60 spaces, but they they have other places in the realm of possibilities where they could be reclaimed. And uh, so it's, it's, you know, the, and even with this particular uh, suggestion, there's different ways of having sidewalks and pretty much all along Ocean Boulevard, it would be like a 12 uh, foot wide sidewalk uh, on <laughs> the uh, western side of Ocean Boulevard. And one, it gets very interesting when you get past the stage and it goes into the area where the Ashworth is. Again, there are many different possibilities, but there could be possibly another turnaround there or at Highland Ave. And <clears throat> or those could be further up down the street. Uh, but at the, where, when you get to the Ashworth, it would actually narrow in and be, again, one lane traffic going north and south, I presume, with a, a center lane. Um, and there would be some changes to where the parking area is at the Ashworth. I guess the state probably leases those spaces to the Ashworth. And in that area, it possibly could have some added parking that would come in. It would probably look better the way he suggested it than it looks today, and it might be better for everybody. But I think this was the most interesting part of it, was there's a discussion about the possibility of, in the middle, where the lanes are, the area where the parking lot is, to move that over onto the ocean front so that you would have the spaces there on the ocean and people wouldn't have to cross over the street and possibly there could be more um, landscaping or whatever. But these are some radical suggestions and I thought the, I thought he did a great job, the gentleman that was discussing this project. Uh, one of the possibilities was that this is the one that seemed to draw a lot of no one could really see how it could happen, but he seemed sure that it could, was two-way traffic on Highland Avenue. So again, you could go out that way. Um, the whole idea of this is, is that there would be many spaces where people could go out. They could be exiting uh, a lot easier, and by the time you got further north, there wouldn't be as much traffic. So by the time you got to Church Street, there wouldn't be very much traffic. Now, I don't have these exact figures, but it was something like, from the way I understood it, that during peak hours, there's something like 1,100 vehicles an hour leaving by way of the bridge that goes to Seabrook and you know exiting out there, whether they go through to Salisbury or go out 286. And <clears throat> basically, from what I understood, there's something like just a little bit less than that that end up going down <clears throat> Church Street or going straight ahead to, you know, Ocean Boulevard North, possibly exiting at um, Winniconnet Road or wherever. Um, so there were, the one road that they really found some, doesn't seem to be too, too very much could possibly happen to would be Church Street because there would have to be property taken. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's the way that this gentleman presented it. There would be a lot less traffic going out that way. It was uh, also interesting when I talked to Senator Preston today, he told me the history of all of that project and how originally back in, I believe, the 60s when they were doing all of that, how originally they were planning on bringing, you know, into, there were a lot of people that wanted the main road to come in actually at High Street. 
Um, so there's, through the years, many things change, and it's interesting to see how you look at things through the years. One of the things that concerned me is that the, this project, even though it's been mentioned many times, and it was mentioned several times as we went along, um, that they want to sort of end it right at Ocean Boulevard, at, uh, Ocean Boulevard and where Boar's Head begins. And that's something that I personally don't understand that well because it is a, basically a parking and traffic study. And a lot of the traffic does exit out at Winnicunit Road. So why would we end the study at the beginning of Boar's Head where we all know that there are issues with Ocean Boulevard and all of the drains that go all the way to um, Winnicunit Road and further up. Um, and so this is something that I'm concerned about. And I know that Chairman Nyan is, um, is proposing that they do continue to Winnicunit Road or possibly even to High Street. And, you know, another thing is, again, it is a parking study. And a lot of the parking that's been done so far, they've put in those new meters that have really been made things a lot easier because the people can use their credit cards, they don't need the change or whatever. And this area to the north there, they still have the old meters. And I'm not, you know, I don't really know what they're planning on doing with that. Hmm. But um, I would like to know if this board could give a letter of support supporting Mr. Nyan in his motion or his conversations to extend this uh, to at least Winnicunit Road. Another p thing that I find is that you know there's a lot of people involved here, a lot of business people, the Hampton Area Commission, the Village Precinct. The Village Precinct also ends at Winnicunit Road and there's a lot of tax revenue that comes into the precinct and helps make the beach what it is and that goes to Winnicunit Road. So I personally would like to see that at least it goes to Winnicunit Road. Uh, I don't think there is many complaints as far as High Street, plus that they've been doing so much down there, but... We don't get any complaints on High Street. On High Street. So to me, I just really don't understand why, why end it right... I've never seen anything ended there at the beginning of Boris Head to begin with. It's always been, I think, Winnicunit Road in my eyes. So that's what I would like mm. to have someone make a motion that we would support the chairman, John Nyan's efforts to expand this. Who's going to pay and, for all this? Well, this is, this is the, they're working on grants and everything. You know, tomorrow there's a meeting with Chris and Nunu at the beach, and that's why I'd kind of like to have it before that, so that I hope to be there to discuss it with him. I have actually discussed it with him before, and um, I just really don't understand why it has been ended right there. I'll make a motion to support them. The John Nyan's efforts, yeah. and is there a second? I'll second that. Would any other discussion? All those in favor, unanimous. And is there some way that we can let Mr. Nyan know this? Because he's working on a lot of this stuff tomorrow. We'll do that first thing in the morning. Yes, yeah, so we could yep. get it to him. And I think he'll enjoy that, the fact that we support his efforts. The other thing is, is Mr. Nyan's um, term is expiring on October 22nd. So uh, do we have to ask? Uh, to open this up to other people, or how does that work? He's been very successful doing board, what he board does. Board discretion. I mean, you, you, you make the appointment. Uh, I don't recall anything in the statute that says you have to go to public review. How does the board feel about it? I think John's done a good job there. I think he's, he's actually brought a lot of people together, and I'll make <coughs> a motion that we reappoint Mr. Nyan to the Hampton Area Commission. Second, whatever date his term. Whatever, right, however long the term is. It it's October. I believe it's a three-year term. Okay, yeah, it is a three-year. It year is term. a three-year term. Mm -hmm. For the three-year term. And I'll, 
as part of the discussion, I would just like to say he has done a very good job. And to be truthful, I don't know how anyone could catch up to what he has done there. Yeah. With, and there does appear to be a lot of good things happening. Yep. So all those in favor, unanimous. So you can maybe inform. I will take him care of that as well. Too. Thank I've you. I've Other old, old yeah. business. While well, we're talking about Winnicunit Road, uh, the gas company has been working on Kings Highway now for a long time, yes. all summer long. Yes. Since no wonder. Yeah. <laughs> since uh, April or May. Yep. Um, the people that live at Winnicunit Road and Kings Highway mm -hmm. are, are getting real frustrated. Because of the mess out because there on the of traffic the mess circle. On the traffic islands. Yep. It's been left there all summer long. They've yep. had to deal with uh, yep. the wind blowing, the sand, the dirt, and everything else. Is there any way we can suggest it? And, and now they're working down in the 12th to 15th Street area. Wow. If, if, how about if they come back and clean up their mess first before they move further down? Good. I well, could. we could request that. No yeah. question about it. I heard someone say that people even park there. They do. They do. Yeah. They yeah. park on top of the mess they th Yeah, they think. And the, and the people that live in that area, I mean, they, they, they've been gracious enough to put up with it all summer long. Yeah. yeah. But enough's enough. Yeah. Yep. So okay. if you could uh, pass that message along. That's, that's another scary. thing, too, about continuing it down to Winnicunit Road. Look at all that work that's been done there. It'd be nice if they could maybe, t you know, take a look at what's, maybe it will make their job easier. Yeah. Um, any other old business? Mr. Waddell? No. Mrs. Wilsley? Mr. Bean? Negative, sir. Okay, moving on to new business. The, number one is approval of a single source vendor. I did that. Oh, did yeah, that? that's right. And acceptance of 2,000 donation from Loco Sports, Inc. I'll make a motion we accept it. I'll that, second that. What, what's it? Yeah, what that's, that? that's correcting an error. You accepted this two thousand dollars in the previous meeting, but it was credited to the wrong organization. Okay. Uh, we want to make sure it's in the record correctly. Okay, I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Unanimous. Other new business, Mr. Waddell. Nope. Mr. Bridal. Nothing. Mrs. Wolseley. Yeah. Negative. Mr. Sir. Bain. Any other new business, Mr. Welch? No, sir. No. Thank you very much for uh, joining us tonight. I hope you had a good time on your vacation. It was too hot. I <laughs> <laughs> Any other closing comments? Nope. See you all Wednesday. See yeah, we're going to be here seven. Wednesday. Yep. And does anybody know exactly what time that meeting is tomorrow? I believe seven. Seven. Is it, seven. I was thinking it was six yeah. and seven. Okay, great. And that's at the room behind the stage there. Yeah. Correct. What time are you moving to adjourn? 8.47. 8.47. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. All right.